My name is Aaron Massey and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to keep your hiney shiny by installing a luxury bidet. If you followed me for a while, you know that back at the beginning of the pandemic, I did a bidet install video. However, we've since moved to another state and I felt it was time to step up my bidet game. So I partnered with Bio Bidet by Bemis to install their new USPA Pro Bidet. This thing has all the bells and whistles that you could think of to keep your keister clean, including a heated seat, multi-speed dryer, multi-position nozzle, and many more features that we'll dive into later on. I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This project isn't too difficult, but it can vary a little bit based on your access to a power source. So as you can see, we are in my wonderfully dated master bathroom at the moment, uh, and we are going to be tackling a full renovation of this room at some point. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on giving myself a little backside spa upgrade. The difference between the bidet that I have here and the bidet that I'm gonna be installing is that it requires power. And as you can see, I don't have any immediate power right here along the toilet, but I do have a light switch right here that controls the light above us. So if I'm lucky, there might be a neutral wire in here. I have a closet on this side. So if we have a neutral wire here, I can run a box down here and install a new outlet. Otherwise, I know on the other side of this wall is my office and I do know there's some outlets on that wall so I could punch through, but this is gonna be the easiest. Now, if you already have power readily available around your toilet, you can skip all this and you can just jump ahead using the links in the description down below. So it looks like we do hard to see. I'll pull that switch out. We can see a little better, but you can see a set of white wires back there with a wire nut. Uh, those should be neutral wires. Then we've got our two uh, black wires going into the switch. We should be good. I should be able to tap into this switch to then run a new GFCI down below. So I'm going to take this switch out and then we'll just go from there. Paint it over, of course. This beautiful brown paint. Now, when you're removing a switch or a uh, receptacle of some kind, uh, get in the habit of grasping it from the top and the bottom rather than grabbing from the sides. If you grab it like this, you're gonna shock yourself if the power's on. So just get in the habit of grabbing it from the top and the bottom, these little tabs, and you can just pull it out, take a look. So what we've got here, the hot side, which is being interrupted by the switch. So one of these will be the line in and one will be the load out to the light. And then in the back back there, we've got some neutral wires that we can tap into. So we've got everything we need. So before I turn the power off, the one thing I do want to know about this is which line of the hot is the line, meaning uh, the power coming into the switch, which one is the load, which is the power going up to the light. So I'm going to take my voltage tester. They both should be right now. So they're both hot at the moment. Now, if I turn the light switch off, one of these wires, This one. So this wire here is the load. This one is the hot line. So I know when I'm running my wiring to connect uh, into this, I need to uh, connect the hot side of my new receptacle to this line. Otherwise, the bidet would only work when the switch is on, which we don't want. I'll turn the power off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart and I'll just put a wire nut on that line wire. That way I know that's the line, and then uh, I can tap into that when I need to. The light switch is roughly right here on the other side of this wall. So what I would like to do is I would like to put the receptacle a little further back, back by the toilet. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is I'm gonna attempt to run a wire down the wall, and then I'll cut the drywall across down back here like this. And then I will install a receptacle kind of back there in the corner. I'm going to attempt to just cut this section of drywall out. I'm going to try to save this piece of drywall, put it right back in where I took it out. If there's blocking in this wall, then it might be a little difficult for me to do. I might have to cut the drywall up here as well, but we're going to try that first and we'll see how that goes. And we'll see if we can drop a wire from that switch down to that opening. So next I'm gonna use my right angle drill and I'm just gonna drill a hole in this stud so I can pass my wire through. I cut out my drywall a little bit lower than where I wanted to put my box. I want my box to be about 12 inches off the ground. 
this is a little bit lower than that, so I'm gonna cut out a little bit of extra drywall, and then I can start putting my box in. Now, the issue with this is that on the other side of this drywall is tile. So I'm gonna have to drill a pilot hole through the tile, figure out where things are, and then I'm gonna use a tile hole saw to get my hole started. The problem is I don't have a lot of space to work around the toilet, so I'm actually gonna be working from the backside, and I'm kind of hoping for the best here in that I don't chip out the tile really bad. So I'm just gonna take my time, and I have a diamond blade on my little reciprocating saw, so I'm just gonna kind of work my way, try and mark out where I want the receptacle box to be, and kind of cut around that line as carefully as I possibly can and hope that it doesn't chip out too bad. I'm using what's called an old work box. And what that means is that instead of having nails to attach the box to the studs, when you stick it in the wall, it has these little tabs that fold up and pinch against the wall as you tighten down these little screws in the corners. And that keeps the box secure. Okay, now that we've got our wire run, we're through our box here and we're down out the box down there. I'm gonna be installing a GFCI. GFCI is a safety device. It's a trippable outlet, basically, that stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. Now, when there's a fault, the outlet trips, it shuts off. Anywhere where there's uh, water, you'll typically find one of these. So in this case, this is gonna be a receptacle at an end of, a, end of the circuit. I'm not gonna be feeding any other wires off of that. I'm just gonna use the hot and the neutral terminal plus the ground. I uh, won't be bothering with this tape here. This tape here is designed to cover over the load terminals. You can install one of these at the beginning of a circuit. And what that will allow you to do is protect all the, the outlets down the line. Um, but in this case, I'm not gonna be doing that. So I'm just gonna do the uh, line in here on the brass terminal and then the neutral wire on the silver terminal. And then we'll ground it with the ground wire. Okay, next we're gonna install our switch up here. What we're gonna be doing for this is called pigtailing. And pigtailing is where we're gonna tie all our wires together here. And then we're gonna have one wire coming off of it. And that one wire will go to the switch. This will be powered hot all the time because this is the line wire. This will go to our outlet down below, down there. And this will go to our switch. And then the load wire will just go back to the switch the same way as it was wired before. I'll tie these neutrals together, I'll tie these grounds together, pigtails the same way, and everything will be good. While I'm in here working on this box, I'm going to replace the switch that was here, the old painted over switch, and I'm going to replace it with a new Decora switch, so that way it'll be somewhat updated, at least this switch will look new, even though the rest of the bathroom is dated. But hey, one step at a time. Now that everything's wired up, I can push the switch back into the box, bend the wires out of the way, screw it in place, get the cover plate on it, and then I can go back outside, turn the panel back on. Okay, now that our power's hooked up, I'm gonna use one of these GFCI testers. You just plug it in, it tells you uh, whether your wiring is correct. Uh, hit the test reset button on the GFCI, make sure that it trips, make sure everything's good. From there, I'm just gonna go back into the closet, put those chunks of drywall back in place where I took them out, using some little scrap pieces of wood to secure them in place and some joint compound and some mud. I'm not super worried about doing a fantastic job with the drywall in here because like I said, it's inside the closet and we're gonna be remodeling at some point. For now, I'm just gonna put some mud on it, kind of feather it out, make it look decent. So now that that's good, we can just focus on installing the actual bidet, which is the easy part. First, I'm gonna turn the water off at the valve at the wall, and then I'm gonna flush the tank and drain as much water out of it as I can and disconnect the water lines. I'm just gonna get rid of the old bidet setup that I have, remove the toilet seat and remove the bidet. The bidet comes in the box with everything that you need. It has uh, water hoses. It has a T-valve, which goes onto the bottom of your fill valve on your uh, toilet tank, the seat and the mounting block. To mount the new bidet seat is actually pretty easy. You just put on this block and you just drop in the little threaded screws and screw it on just like you would a toilet seat. And then the actual bidet seat just slides in and snaps into place. You just gotta make sure you pull the wire out of the way so that you're not you know, obstructing yourself with the wire. And from there, I'm just gonna install the new T splitter at the bottom of the fill valve. You might need a bucket if there's excess water in the tank once you disconnect the water line. With the T-splitter installed, I'll just reconnect the water line to the bottom of the T-splitter, and then I'll run the new water line from the T to the new bidet. And then from there, all that's left to do is turn the water back on and plug this thing in, let it fill up, 
It has a little reservoir in the back so that it can keep heated water in it. So it takes a minute to fill up the tank, but then all that's left to do is test out this bad boy. This thing is freaking awesome. So in terms of functionality, you've got the uh, back spray, you've got front spray for the ladies. You can save uh, user profiles, two, two of them. Um, you can adjust the nozzle position. So uh, if you turn it on, so if we just turn this on, and we go, uh, you can move it front, back. You can adjust the water pressure from high to low. So if you wanna change the water pressure, you can turn it down. You can move the nozzle position. You can change the water temperature. You can keep it cold. You can make it a little warm. You can make it hot. You can change sound. You can change dry different dry speeds, change the temperature. You can change the temperature of the seat. You got an LED aerated spray. You got a massage function, eco mode, deodorizer, and even a mode for kids. So literally, you can do everything with this and it's amazing. So that's it for this video. I wanna say a quick thank you once again to Bio Bidet for sending over this USPA Pro Bidet. And if you wanna get one for yourself and make your sphincter sparkle, you can get 10% off at the link down below using the promo code FIXIT10. Or you can always grab one for yourself at costco.com. If you did like this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel for more DIY home improvement and repair projects. And as always, you can find all my how-to tutorials and content on my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.